If you felt like your groove is stiff, robotic, and nobody wants to dance to it, then today's lesson is for you. You can stick to straight feel or swung feel if you like, but without exploring the half swing, you'll never really tap into the funky swampiness that really gets a band and audience jamming hard. I'll show you exactly what this really is, give you some really fun song examples, and break down exactly how to master the half swing feel yourself today and get the band grooving and the audience dancing. You can do this. Welcome to the Non-Glamorous Drummer. I'm so glad you're hanging out today. My goal is to help you become the musician other people want to jam with and have in their band who nails songs. And we do this by teaching you the core critical drumming skills that get you results faster. And hey, if you are a beginner drummer, or even if you're beyond beginner, this is something that'll probably help you out a lot. I want you to go grab my free gift for you in the description, my 30 days to four way rock coordination e-guide. Because here's the deal, you gotta have coordination to master the drums. You gotta have that four way limb independence. With it, you can play whatever you want to. You can play the ideas in your head, everything is fun, easy, you can learn songs fast. There's so little frustration because your limbs just do what they're supposed to do, they obey your brain. But without that coordination, without that limb independence, everything is difficult, everything is frustrating, and it's just tedious. And learning songs is like, you know, it's like you're having to learn step by step and you're trying to figure it all out because you're having to, your, your limbs are having to learn again each time. Versus if you build the coordination, you've got that foundation and you can then go and learn whatever with it. That's what I want for you. And this guide will really help you get there. And it's totally free, so simple. Uh, you might be able to work through it in 30 days. It might take you a little bit longer. That's totally fine. But what I find is that students are getting big results out of this by days 10, 12, 15, usually that midpoint. Uh, so hey, just make it a goal to get to day 10, get to day 15, that's tremendous. And you're gonna be reaping the rewards. And if you can get all the way through this, even if it takes you a few months, that's gonna be a huge win for you and your coordination and your drumming journey. So go grab that, my free gift to you. On with today's lesson. Many students groove feels robotic. Uh, maybe you can relate to this where you're playing and you're just like, it, it doesn't feel that interesting. I don't have a cool feel. It's just kind of robotic. It's just stiff. It just doesn't feel interesting. And maybe you've heard people tell you, maybe you've played with a band, you've played in a setting where somebody has said to you, dude, just add some more feel to it. You know, you just need some more feel. Go listen to so-and-so drummer because he's just got feel for days, man. His groove's just dripping with feel. Just sound like him. I remember being told that. I think this was when I was in college. And so I was probably playing in an ensemble in, in music school. And I remember always hearing that, like, yeah, just add some feel, you know, make it, make it more interesting. Tap into that feel. And it was so abstract that it was frustrating. It was like, what do you mean by that? Just tell me what feel actually is. And so I don't know if you can relate to that. Maybe, maybe you've been through that where you know you want your groove to have more feel. You want it to feel better. You want it to feel like Steve Jordan's groove. Um, I think he's one of the best groove drummers there is. But you just don't know how to do that. So that's kind of where, that's where we want to go today. I want to help you solve this and give you a really cool, fun, interesting way to accomplish a very cool feel in your playing. So what is this half swing thing? Well, it is what it says it is. The half swing is halfway between a straight feel and a swung feel. And we're, we're gonna talk a little bit more about uh, exactly what this looks like and how it sounds. But I think a great example of this in music is Superstition by Stevie Wonder. It's that groove that just starts with where it's mostly kind of a swung feel. But if we were to play a full on swung feel, it would probably be like this. That would feel pretty tight, you know. But really superstition is more of this like spread out kind of. Like that, where it's like, we're not straight. That would be straight, we're not swung. It's in between. And that's what's really interesting. I think some of the best feeling grooves out there, the most interesting, cool, swampy, danceable, jammable feel you can create is that. And Superstition by Stevie Wonder, as well as some other songs I'll tell you about, really embody that feel. So be sure to give that a listen. I remember eventually realizing this, my groove was kind of lame and stiff too. That's why I, I say, you know, I've, I've been through this. <laughs> And this is a whole frustrating thing for me, but I started playing with a blues band in college. We played a lot of blues stuff. We played a lot of, um, yeah, we played a lot of old blues, a lot of acoustic rock and a lot of harmonica driven stuff. And we would just jam all the time. 
And what I started realizing just by osmosis, by playing with these guys and playing a lot of these songs, I started to realize, okay, so many of these songs have this feel that's neither straight nor swung, and it just feels so swampy and cool. You could throw triplets into it and it worked. You could play something straight and it worked, but it was kind of just this halfway in between. And it was so cool and I began to really tap into that and realize, okay, I can create a really cool danceable groove that people really want to jam to. And I started having so much fun getting into that. And so that's what I want to help you do Today, here's, here's what I think. The half swing will make your groove sound unique, funky, and less robotic, and you'll end up creating the most fun, danceable groove feel there ever was. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do this on the kit and what goes into it technique-wise, because really it comes down to your timekeeping. That's where it starts, at least. We've gotta get that right feel going on with our right hand, and then from there, it's just a matter of locking in the kick and the snare. But I'm also gonna show you what this looks like on the grid inside Logic. So Logic is the DAW, Digital Audio Workstation, I use to record. I've got it running right now here on this computer recording this. And in Logic, what's really cool is you can lay out like beats on a MIDI graph. You can put together MIDI drum beats. And so you can see exactly where everything is and where it's lining up. And so you can visually see the difference between a triplet feel, a straight feel, and you can see where the half swung feel fits in. Very interesting, super informative for all of us visual people. So I hope that'll be helpful to you and just kind of shed some more light on this so this all makes sense. So first I'm gonna show you how to physically do this on the drum since this is a drum lesson, but then I wanna show you what it looks like and have the computer also play it for you because the computer can obviously play a perfect half swung feel, whereas mine is always gonna be a little bit sloppy because I'm human. And so you can really hear and see the differences. So that's gonna be a lot of fun. Here's what we wanna do. Create the half swing feel in three steps. Step one, pretty obvious, we want to create a shuffled molar. So I've got a, additional lessons here on the channel about molar, you can go check that out if you're new to it. But molar technique is a whole concept of loud, soft, loud, soft, and accomplishing those two notes within one motion. It's not truly two for the price of one because it's not doubles, we're not relying on rebound, instead we're relying on a motion, the down to create an accent, the up to create a tap, down, up, that's molar technique in a nutshell. So that's step one, but we want to shuffle that. So that was straight, that was straight 16. So one, E, N, A, uh, two, E, N, A. Uh. Instead we wanna shuffle it and go, give it that round triplet feel, triple that, triple that. You can test it by playing notes in between, kind of like this. One, oh, uh, let, two, oh, uh, let, three, oh, uh, let, however you want to count it. Uh, by the way, if you're trying to learn the Rosanna Shuffle, that incorporates that, where we have these ghost notes that happen in between. But in the meantime, this will test your coordination by practicing that, but you can test that you actually have a true triplet feel here by making sure that you can insert a note in between. If not, then you know, okay, I'm not actually fully triplet, so that's what you want to make sure. Bun, dun, dun. Top edge, top edge, soft, loud, soft, loud. And something critical here is that this requires a pretty firm grip. And this is something we always end up, this comes up in so many lessons here on the channel, where we're talking about grip and how, you know, this, the grip that we use for this. You know, just lightly hitting drums, that grip does not work for this whole molar thing. We have to grip more firmly, which means we've got to slide the stick a little further up that middle finger. We want to do a middle finger fulcrum, bring the stick closer to the palm because that allows us to actually put more pressure on it without a lot of physical exertion, without thumb cramping and hand fatigue, and curl our fingers around so that we end up with this grip that looks pretty firm and almost looks like index finger, but it's not, it's still middle. And that gives us the ability to manipulate the motion and the rebound of the stick so that we can go soft, loud, soft, loud, up, down, up, down. So I'll say no more, I'll just play a little bit here. I want you to work on creating this yourself.
If you can get it about up to there, that might take some time. Be patient. I don't expect you to just play along with me and have all this down. And so don't get frustrated and feel like I'm leaving you behind at this point. That step takes some time. If you're new to this, it takes some time. And again, revisit that initial molar lesson here on the channel if you're new to molar technique, if you are a total beginner. You can make sure you're getting a good grasp on that. All we're doing is taking molar and we're shuffling it, which is a little bit harder because we're not as easily able to just, you know, straight molar can become pretty autopilot and honestly pretty effortless when you get that motion down. But shuffled requires more effort because we're having to go <clears throat> just a little bit more forced in a way. And so it requires more effort. Now on the bright side, now when we go into step two, so that was, that was all step one. Step two, we want to slopify it. We want to gradually straighten it out just a little bit, which fortunately for us is actually easier. It's easier to play a sloppy shuffled feel than it is to play a proper shuffled feel. If you're trying to play Rosanna, that's where you got to have the right shuffled feel. So that you can do that. So that's gotta be tight, that's gotta be shuffled, but we wanna straighten it out a little bit. So what you can actually do here is just get lazy. <laughs> just, just think, all right, instead of trying to be tight, how can I just get a little lazy with it? Where it's like, okay, we're not gonna go straight. Straight would be right here. We're not gonna go full on tight shuffle, as my stick slips off. We don't wanna be full tight shuffle, we just wanna be somewhere in between. And so just don't, don't even try to get it mathematically precise because getting a half swing mathematically precise is impossible because we're human. The goal here is to achieve a certain feel, which is kind of like this loose, sloppy, straight feel or this loose, sloppy, swung feel. We're just taking either one and just kind of giving a straight feel, a little bit of swing. Or we're taking a, a swung feel and just being a little bit lazy with it. And so sit there just with your right hand on the hi-hat and play around with this. This is where you gotta be patient because remember we're trying to accomplish a feel. We're not trying to do math here. I'll show you what it looks like mathematically precisely on the grid and logic. And so I know you engineers and you math-minded people, I know there's a lot of you and I'm kind of the same way to a degree. I know we like that kind of stuff, but wh what it comes down to here is we just have to achieve a feel and just get into this mental space of kind of this weird sort of hip hop feel, this bluesy feel that's not full on tight, not full on straight. Just practice doing that until it starts to feel right. And then step three, add in the kick on beat one, beats one and three, add in the snare on two and four. And then what's really cool, as you get more comfortable with this, and as you get comfortable with locking kick and snare with this, which is also a topic for another lesson. I've got another lesson on this about locking your kick and your snare with hi-hat off beats uh, because something that's challenging is going, you know, playing kick or snare on those off beats. But if you can do that, that means you can then swing the kick and the snare along with this. like that, and that's what you want to be able to do. And what's really cool too, when you get into this feel, you don't have to do 16th timekeeping, you can just do eighth notes. Practice creating that swing with alternating 16ths too. It's not full on shuffled. That would be shuffled, it's also not straight. Just see if you can create that sloppy just have fun with it. Now, 
And what's also going to help you out a lot with this is having some songs to reference, which we'll do in just a minute. By the way, this feel really excels around, I think, 85 to 105. And personally, I think that 90 to 95 beats per minute is the sweet spot for this particular feel, where it's not full shuffled, it's not full straight, that half swing, it feels really good around 90 to 95. So just keep that in mind. Practice this slower, work on getting the feel right slower so that you can really tell, because the faster you go, the more blurred the lines get and the less difference there is between fully swung and half swung. But when you're going slow, you can really feel and hear the difference. And that's what you'll notice when I show you the, the uh, tracks in Logic as well. So. Let's jump over there now. We're gonna jump over to Logic. I'll play for you the computer's rendition of perfect straight, perfect swung, perfect half swung, and we'll also, I'll show you a couple other variations and you can see exactly what these look like on the grid. So this will just shed some additional light and uh, this will be a lot of fun. But I also have a free gift for you, something else I wanna give you for free just for watching today and help you out even more with this. And so we'll do that in just a moment after we come back to the kit. So I'll see you back here in a minute. Here we are in Logic. So here is the clip of the straight 16th feel. You can see it right here on the grid. And if you zoom in, so the, the red notes are the uh, loud ones and then uh, those light green ones are quieter. It's just the way Logic color codes. And so you can see that's our molar 16th. Dun, 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 dun. And you can see right here how they're all evenly spaced. Each note is on its line. There's a line, there's a line, there's a line. And so this is our straight 16th to the grid. Give this a listen. It, it sounds exactly as you would expect. This is at 80 beats a minute. I think this is the fastest we wanna to go to really hear these differences. So now let's jump over to the swung one, the triplet feel. So here's what it looks like. So obviously you can see how those green notes here, there's the green notes. These have all been dragged back just a little bit. They've been dragged later in time. So this green note uh, right here used to be right here on this line. I've got these gray notes here just to serve as markers. Used to, the green note was right here, straight, dun, 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 dun. But now I did a triplet quantize here in Logic, so this is exactly to a triplet swung feel, and so now it's right here. So basically those quiet notes, all that happens when we change the feel from straight to swung is the quiet notes, the taps get pushed later, laid back. So here's what this sounds like. It's a pretty tight swung. And you can tell how, just for fun, let's bump this tempo up to 100. So here's the superstition tempo. You can feel how that is not at all the feel of superstition because it feels too tight of a swing. Da, 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 da. Instead, it has to get more swampy. It has to straighten out to really feel like superstition. It just feels really weird. All right, let's bring the tempo back down to 80. Now let's look at the half swing. So. Here's the half swing. Here's what I want you to notice. Let's zoom in right here. So remember this green note was right here next to the second gray note. That was our full on swing. Full on swing was the green note right here. Full on straight would be right here. So now I've manually dragged all of these green notes, the soft notes to be as close as I can see to exactly halfway between this point right here, the front end of the second gray note there, and the front end of the first gray note. So now we are halfway between straight and swung, which essentially just means in, in Comparison to straight, it means that these soft notes have been pushed back just a hair. Or compared to swung, it means we've pulled them forward just a hair. So here's what half swing sounds like played to perfection by the computer. Let's bump it up to 100 and see if it feels like superstition. Feels a little bit too busy to me because Stevie Wonder's doing less notes. It's not a full on dun, 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 dun. But you can feel how, okay, now it's got that proper feel where at a quicker tempo of like 100, it actually works. It doesn't feel too dun, 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 dun. That almost feels frantic if we're doing a full on tight swing at 100, but instead it's that kind of looser laid back sort of feel, which ironically we've pushed notes forward, not back to get this feel. So there it is, there's the half swing feel. Here it is at 80 again. Exactly halfway between triplet swing and 16th straight. And so again, zooming in, you can see exactly where these are landing, where 
the soft notes aren't quite to triplet. This right here would be triplet position. Right here is straight instead it's halfway. Now, just for fun, I wanna also show you these. So one third swing. So now we're even straighter. Now we're only about a third of the way from straight to swung. We'll see how this one sounds. This one I think is interesting because it, it kind of just feels straight, but with a little bit of this swampiness to it. And that's how you do it. That's how you get the slight bit of swampiness, just a tiny bit of swing. Here's the two thirds swing. So two thirds swing, see how the green notes are now closer to that second gray note. So we're now closer to the, uh, the, the full on triplet swing than the half swing. So we're more swung than we are the half swing. Here it is. And it kind of feels to me like a full swing. At first listen, it feels like a full swing just without the ta -ta 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 -ta, without the tightness. And so that's what's interesting about it, especially if you go a little faster with this, like if we go to 90. Feels like a swing to me, just without the ta -ta 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 -ta. So I hope this was illuminating and interesting and helpful to you at least seeing this. So now let's wrap up over here on the kit. I'll see you back over there. Here's what I want you to do next. Tells you I had an extra free gift for you. I want you to practice along to half swung drum tracks to test your abilities. So go download the ones you just saw in Logic for free. I've got those available for you to download. You can go grab those. They're all at 80 beats a minute. I know I said 90 to 95 is a sweet spot, but really you've got to go slower to see and hear and feel the exact differences in these. And if you can master this and really get this feeling good at 80, then you can do it at 90 to 95. So go grab these practice tracks. They're 80 beats a minute. They just loop over and over again for a couple minutes, something like that. And so just practice playing along to it and getting that feel. You can practice you know, getting your 16th feel to match the computers. You can also just practice playing eighth notes and then doing some snare ghosting and saying, okay, can I make a kick snare pattern fit in with this? Because those tracks are just playing this. So it's like a simple four on the floor with sixteenths. But you can play along with that something like this. Practice something like that or something without timekeeping or some ride timekeeping. The idea is get the feel. You don't have to play exactly what's on the track. Just practice playing along with it so you can get that feel in your head. So what will also help you with this, definitely go grab those. They're free. You can download them. But check out Superstition by Stevie Wonder. That's a really good one. It's 100 beats a minute. And Superstition is interesting because I think the timekeeping is fairly well swung, but a lot of the fills are pretty straight. And so it all kind of averages out to that swampy half swung feel. But another really good Stevie Wonder song is I Wish, which is a little bit faster. It's about 105 beats a minute. And the interesting, interesting thing about I Wish is that the timekeeping actually feels more straight to me. Like it's a little bit swung, but it's more straight, but a lot of the fills kind of feel swung. So it's just funny the way, you know, Stevie Wonder as a drummer just has this, you know, swampy kind of feel where it's just, he's just going for it. And it doesn't matter that the amount of swing is not consistent. And that's the way these feels are a lot of times where you've got this half swung feel. So it might mean that some fills are totally straight. While the timekeeping is... And so the timekeeping might be swung, the fills might be straight, or the timekeeping could be straight. It doesn't matter. Point is, it's this swampy kind of feel. These songs will help you get that in your head. Another really good one is Sissy Strut. I really like the King Herbert and the Knights recording. I used to play this one on a gig a bunch. This one's 96 beats a minute, so it's closer to what I think is the sweet spot, in my opinion. But go listen to the Sissy Strut. It's a, it's a pretty syncopated beat. And you'll hear undeniably that half swung feel. It's not completely swung. It's definitely not straight. So listen to that. And the more you listen to these songs and get this in your head, the easier this all becomes. You've got to have the music in your head to really tap into your inner swampiness so that you can really get the band grooving, jamming, and get people dancing. Because people always, on gigs where I play this kind of stuff, people are always dancing. Nobody doesn't dance to superstition.
it's just, it's the most danceable groove ever. And so if you can accomplish the feel that's in Superstition, you're gonna get people dancing. This is gonna be a really fun way to really get the band just grooving, jamming, everybody feeling good, everybody relaxing, and your audience relaxing too. So I hope you have a lot of fun with this. Question for you, tell me in the comments, what is your favorite funky feeling song? So it's safe to say mine is one of these, probably Superstition. I think that's always a go-to, but there's so many of these. This list could have gone on. I could have spent hours researching and pulling from every gig set list I've ever played. There's definitely a lot more out there that I haven't mentioned and some that I've probably totally forgotten about. You tell me, what is your favorite funky feeling song? Maybe it's not a half swung song. I don't know, because you can have a funky feel swung or straight, but so many of these are half swung. And if you can think of one that does kind of have that, that hybrid swing feel, Awesome, you get extra points. So tell me, what is your favorite funky feeling song? Be sure to go grab those practice tracks so you can really nail down this feel. And also don't forget to grab the 30 day coordination guide. I know I'm throwing a lot of bonus free stuff at you. Hopefully it's all helpful. And uh, my goal is just to help you sound awesome, feel awesome and have fun on the drums. But as always, stay non-glamorous, know that you can do this. I'll see you on the next lesson.